All right, Samra, tell me how you feel about it. Tell the folks what happened to, uh, to your campaign, man. Well, first and foremost, uh, Mark, I appreciate you coming out. As always, uh, I'm Cyron Smith, candidate for the 32nd District. Let me change that. I'm the writing candidate now. Uh, today uh, is uh, December uh, 6th. It's Sunday, December 6th. Toys for Tots. You're going to hear those motorcycles um, speed. You got to take that phone call, man. Go right ahead. Um, take that phone call. Nah, no, we, we, we good, man. We good. You got to say hi to You're organizing, man. Yeah, it's Sunday, <laughs> but we work every day. And... Um, you were right in candidate, huh? I, I had to write in on uh, Tuesday, December first. I was removed. Um, uh, well, let me say this: I withdrew because they, and when I say they, the incumbent Mike Madigan's lawyer, Michael Casper, Yvette Williams, Virgil Jones, they all stacked the deck against me and forced me in a position where it wouldn't have made sense for me to stay on the ballot. So I removed myself to leave options open. There's a state law that says that if you are defeated. Um, in your challenges uh, that you won't be able to uh, be involved in the general election. So the goal was to remove myself so that I leave a few options open. And one of those options is the write-in candidacy, which means that you, the voters, still have a choice. You haven't been totally disenfranchised, but you have a choice to write in my name uh, as the 32nd District State Representative. So that's, that's what happened. That was on uh, December 1st that occurred, and uh, that's where we are now. Um, shortly, in about two uh, hour and a half from now, we're going to be mobilizing uh, a small strike force in front of the House Speaker's home on 64th and Keeler to uh, bring attention to this political control tactic and, and game that, the, that these, I don't want to say Democrats because I'm a Democrat as well, but that the Democratic leadership plays. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate because what happens is they remove the choices away from you, the voter. Uh, by my name not being on the ballot, if I'm not able to reach your block or use my network to get in touch with family and friends, you won't even know that I am uh, one of the most um, uh, committed public servants out there. You won't even know that because Mike Madigan, Mike Casper, Andre Tepetti, Yvette Jones, all these people work behind the scenes to take away my name and that means taking away your option of voting for me. And for some people who never heard me speak before, the, the, the reason I'm running is because for 10 years I've been throughout Chicago on the blocks when people have been murdered, raped, houses burned down, um, block by block, touching the families, finding out how we can work together to, to improve their quality of life. Uh, I haven't seen. And, and I'm not saying this to toot my horn because I, I really believe it's going to take a system, not a person. I haven't seen a more dedicated uh, servant out there block by block throughout all of Chicago. You don't hear me talking about West Side better than South Side, South Side better than West Side. I believe that that stuff is a, a distraction and it has no place in you know, improving lives of people. And so I've been out there door to door, block to block, and, and engaging people, getting to know people. And now to have my name removed is a disservice to the people of the 32nd District. Um, our boundaries, just for, for those who, who uh, may not know, are on the east at Cottage Grove, going all the way west to Pulaski. And from some parts of 64th, uh, on the north end of the district, to as far south as 83rd, um, 72nd in some parts, but 83rd on the far western part of the district. So anyone within that, those boundaries, and keep in mind, most of the violence that's occurring, uh, the, 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 the senior citizen that was shot to death in front of the liquor store on 69th and Ashland recently, uh, the 20-year-old man ran to the alley, he was gunned down and murdered. Uh, that was in my, our district. Uh, the, the young 22-year-old that was gunned down on 67th and May, that was in our district. This happened all within the last month. Then we had the 20-year-old uh, Frederick who was gunned down and killed. He's from 68th and Ada in our district. Uh, so we had these incidents, and most of the stuff is on YouTube with us working with the families, um, being in their life. And this is what I do for free. Uh, our state representative, while that's not their legal job, but the position of elected office holder means that people put their trust in you, and you should use that trust to help them as well. And so that's one of the key reasons why I'm running is because I'm going to continue to do the block by block work. I'm going to do that no matter what. 
But if I am empowered, if I am elected, now I will have access to the very tables where decisions are being made that currently we don't have anyone who's representing us, who's on the block listening to the issues we're dealing with and then taking those issues and going and sitting at the table with the other decision makers and saying, whoa, 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 that is not going to be in the best interest of 67th and May, 66th and Perry. So we need someone like that. So that is critical, people. I, I, I can't stress that enough. We are in a situation that if we're not careful, primarily the African Americans in Chicago, and, and I do work across the country as well, we're in a situation where we can become extinct. It is that dire. And that's with the prison and industrial complex, that's with the HIV, that's with our young people giving up hope and, and everyone wanting to go into entertainment and sports and, and things of that nature. And uh, number one, the homicides, blacks killing blacks. So we had to really, really everyone raise our standards and say I would no longer tolerate people in leadership positions. Um, that's from the pastors in leadership position, that's from the politicians in leadership positions, that's from the business owners in leadership positions, and of course the household. So everyone has to be held more accountable. And uh, my whole thought process is let's do it block by block. Let's get in a situation where we have transparency, where we can evaluate that corner store on 69th and National where any resident can go and say, let me see the report card on this store. And that report card is a track record of what that store has done for the community, things that have done that's been not in the best interest of the community. We need to have that type of report card done block by block on all institutions, including the churches. It's, it's time out for churches that come in our community, hold service, and then leave. What is your commitment? Um, people laugh when I say this, but if Jesus was here in the flesh, and we know he's amongst us and living through us in the spirit realm, but if he was here in the flesh, where would he be with all this murder in Chicago? Would he be in four walls today on Sunday? Or would he be out here on these streets directly talking to these hopeless spirits that's out here and helping to convert them? And uh, you be the judge of that. And, and that's one of the reasons why I stay out here on the blocks is because the people I talk to and interact with, they're not coming in your church. The church is going to have to come out there to them. And so I'm begging our church community to really come outside the four walls, do what Jesus would do, and let's hit it block by block. On the business on the side, and we, you know, the corner stores in the black community are all but almost gone. We do have a small list of mom and pop stores that's still around. And the list of those stores, uh, 90% of them are struggling to keep their doors open. It pains me when I'm in the stores talking to these business owners and the majority of their money is being made off candy and, and sweets um, because we, our community continuously takes the money outside the neighborhood or gives it to people who take it outside the neighborhood. The plan with them is simple. We're going to ask every single resident to commit to $10 a month. We're going to bring you the grocery list from that store, and we just ask that you check off $10 worth of products. By doing that, you're going to help that store, and you're going to create a job for some teenager who's going to shop for you and deliver that $10 worth of products from that store. Every other ethnic group understands the value of keeping the dollars rotating in their neighborhood. For some reason, and that reason I'm still open to learn here, for some reason, whether it's Detroit, Gary, Chicago, you know, any other urban city, for some reason, our community does not have the black-owned businesses that the dollars rotate more than four hours. And if that is happening anywhere in the country, please let me know. I would love to do a YouTube video on that because I just haven't seen it. And we're in 20 cities all over the country and I just haven't seen that. The, the, the problem with that, the problem with us uh, not having uh, black owned stores in our community rotate. When we look at our children and, and, and they say the young people seem hopeless.